Good morning, everyone. Pastor Brett here, and it's time for some coffee with the scriptures. Amen. Hallelujah. I thank the Lord for another day, and I thank the Lord for the privilege of being able to um, share this with you um, in light of uh, all of the um, all of the excitement over Pastor Dwayne's um, search through uh, textual criticism. Um, I thought that I would uh, look at this um, and uh, share with you my findings and what I believe uh, the Word of God um, reads and should read. Just simple, right? Um, because even though I do translate, um, I was not called to be the translator. Hallelujah. And... Uh, uh, doing textual criticism is one thing, um, but allowing textual criticism to be the final voice, um, the final word, the gavel, if you will, in this court uh, uh, of understanding. Um, no, uh, we have to look into this and see what the Word of God says. Amen. So we'll go to him in prayer and say, Father, thank you so much for your word. Thank you for this time in your word. Thank you for all that you give and all that you continue to give. We give you thanks and praise for everything. Hallelujah. Have your way with us. Have your way with us, we pray in Jesus' name. Amen. Um, amen. So we're looking at um, Ephesians 3 and verse 9. Uh, and when you read Ephesians 3 and verse 9, you'll see um, a difference here that needs to be highlighted. It's something that it's important. It says, uh, verse 9, um, we'll, we'll read from verse 7 through 9, just so you get a contextual picture. Amen? So, wherefore, I was made a minister according to the gift of the grace of God given unto me by the effectual working of his power. Okay, and then he says, unto me who am less than the least of all saints is this grace given, that I should preach among the Gentiles the unsearchable riches of Christ. And verse 9, with the little star I put there, um, it says, and to make all men see what is the fellowship of the mystery which from the beginning of the world hath been hid in God, who created all things by Jesus Christ. And so we're going to do this, all right? And so what is the fellowship? Fellowship is the word in question. We'll put a little translation note there, and we'll put a little T down here. We'll go over and grab this black Pigma Microns, best pens to use to write in your Bibles. And the Greek there is koinonia, okay? And it's going to be a little sloppy. Koinonia, okay? And koinonia is fellowship. No problem there, right? Where does the problem come in then? Uh, the problem comes in when you take the modern critical text and you use it you, if you trust it, if you um, dive into it, it becomes an issue. Once you look at it, um, like this is one of my problems with the New King James Version. Once you see a note that says, oops, could be that, now you got a question. Now, when the translators themselves do it, then you say, okay. They put X, but they say Y is okay too, all right? Could be Y. Now, you have to 
read it and say, hmm, now you read it in context and you say, okay, is the fellowship of the mystery or the the modern critical text uses um, oikonomia. And oikonomia is almost the same as koinonia, right? Oikonomia, though, is different. It is the administration. So now, do we have fellowship or administration? Which one should it be? Look in the context and see what the context, how the context reads. All right. So we know that there is a, a message, an understanding of what's the subject, the mystery, right? What's the mystery? Christ in us, the hope of glory, right? That's what the scripture says. But is it understanding? Is it fellowshipping with those that believe the same? Is it fellowship? Is it the gathering together, the the um, the ecclesia? Um, is, is it, what is it? What is fellowship? Is it fellowship gathering together or is it, um, oikonomia, which, so we go over here and we get this little handy dandy little Greek New Testament, right? And we look at now, I'm also going to show you something here in the Newberry Bible, all right? And the Newberry Bible, of course, this is Thomas Newberry. And Thomas Newberry, this is like the 1811, he died in 1901. Um, and his work was not appreciated as much as it should have been. There is an ISBN for you if you're interested in the Newberry Bible, Um I would, if you're interested in textual criticism, um, yet you want to support your belief in the King James Version, and you want to engage in textual criticism, this would be a good Bible for you. Um, if you are, you know, into that, geeky, and if you, you are, you read the introduction, you need to know what the symbols are, what all these little symbols mean. When you get into the Bible, this is what you want to know. So... Um, having said that, we go and we look at Ephesians 3, 9 in the Thomas Newberry Bible, which, by the way, was printed in the late 1800s. Um, Thomas Newberry knew about the modern critical text, but it had not yet taken any, um, had not yet taken anyone by storm. The modern critical text had not yet gotten any footing. Um, and of course, it was before the 1901, the American Standard Bible was printed. Uh, this was printed after um, the modern critical text was born, which, of course, Westcott and Hort got a hold of Codex Sinaiticus, compared it to Vaticanus, used both in their translation of, but their translation was, look, pretty much 90% of it was uh, Codex Sinaiticus. So uh, if they tell you different, don't believe it. Um, don't believe it. Uh, you, you can't trust the manuscript to begin with. So I'm um, not going to make this about Codex Sinaiticus, except just to look at Thomas Newberry's note on Ephesians 3.9, what did Thomas Newberry see? Did he see koinonia or did he see oikonomia? Now he was looking into text variants and this Bible is built on his understanding of textual variation. Um, but he was not using the modern critical text. I'll tell you that much right now. Um, he might have consulted it here or there. I'm um, not really sure. However, I do know that uh, most of his conclusions are stop that, stop that, stop that. No, 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 no. <laughs> My cat wants to play. Um, so we look at Ephesians 3 9 and we see. Galatians, Ephesians, there he is. 
chapter um, 2, chapter 3, verse 9. And we see there's 8 and verse 9. And we see, and that he says unto me, who am less than the least of all saints, is this grace given, that I should preach among the Gentiles the unsearchable riches of Christ, right? And to make all men see what is the, what is the fellowship of the mystery. No, no. When you see a text variant in this text, in the Thomas Newberry Bible, you will see a note. You'll see a note in many different ways. You'll see a, a, a letter. You'll see um, a, these are three like lines, one, two, three. And like you would see at your phone, those three lines, you touch them and oh, that gives you the menu. Well, that he uses that. He uses other symbols here, but there's nothing here by fellowship of the mystery. Because I'll tell you, there was no question about it at that time, um, because he had not yet taken this into consideration. It was, you know, heavily rejected um, in the beginning after it was found. Codex Sinaiticus, it was just heavily rejected because of all the variants and all of the differences. They were just like, no way. But yet, the devil was not done with this Bible. He was not done with this book. He was not done uh, twisting it in the minds of those that found it and propagated it. Pros Hebraeus, that's Hebrews. We don't want according to Hebrews. We want according to Ephesus. Timothy, 2 Timothy, Thessalonica, Thessalonians, Thessalonikes, um, Colossus. So here's Colossians, there's Philippians, here is Ephesians. And we want, this is a nice Bible. I tell you, I wish this was uh, TR. I really do. I, I wish this was Byzantine text. This is amazing. Um, I'm really looking forward to Pastor Dwayne's uh, Byzantine text manuscript um, Bible to be done. Um, Ephesians chapter 3. We're at 6. There's 5. Um, and there's 3. And 3 and verse 19 would be here. 3 and verse 19. Forgive my lighting. Um, and so we're looking for the Greek koinonia or, or kinomia. Um, and that you might know the love of Christ. No seos agapain tu Christu. Hina, um, let's see. Um, I do not see koinonia or oikonomia in this text. Why? Am I looking at the... Uh, I'm looking at 319. No wonder I want 39. <gasps> That's horrible. See, here it is. 39, excuse me. And so... Plutus to Christu kai... Fotisai... Here it is. Hey, oikonomia. So that's the culprit right there, the modern critical text, Codex Sinaiticus. Um, I don't know if Vaticanus reads the same here. I'm going to have to look and see, but I don't think it does. Fellowship of the mystery, or, and if you see, you notice the King James translators didn't see the difference either. Because it wasn't there. There was no, it was the Byzantine text form. While there are variants within the context of the Byzantine text form, they're not to the point of causing division over the differences. Um, they are, oh, well, it could be blessed or it could be, you know, happy. It could be, or give thanks. Or, you know, 
And so these are differences that you can just, okay. They don't change the meaning of the text greatly. Um, and so we, we know that. Why? Because translators make, you know, mistakes. Translators do things that other translators don't agree with. And so there it is. Um, yeah. Um, fellowship of the mystery. I'm going to stick with the fellowship of the mystery, but I'm going to say that um, the administration of the mystery, oikonomia, could be, could be applicable here. It can be applied. Um, are you called a fellowship in this mystery, or are you called to administer this mystery and to make all men see. So there is a desire to do something here to make all men see what is the, all right, administration of the mystery or fellowship of the mystery. So let me know what you think in the comments section. Um, and maybe I'll even do a, um, do a poll and we'll see. Fellowship of the mystery or administration of the mystery? Which word do you think fits the context better? All right. Look at the meaning of those two words. Just look at the English definition of those two words and see which one applies um, better to that text. Tell me what you think. And then uh, I'll let you know what I think in the next video regarding this. Okay. Thanks for watching, everybody. Jesus loves you. I love you. A little bit longer than usual, but I hope you'll come back again where we can share more coffee with the scriptures. Amen. Thanks for watching, everyone. Jesus loves you, and I love you. I hope and pray that you have a great day. In Jesus' name.